Isabella, tell me what you learned from Squirrel's New Year's resolution. Um, Squirrel gave out. Squirrel already had a resolution, but he didn't know that he had a resolution. But and then the girl who gave her gave her food. She she said, "You already have a resolution. You gave everybody the answers for their resolutions." So and then he wrote down his resolution. So what was his resolution at the very end? To to. It was it was what. Remember, everybody was coming to him for what. Resolutions. For for advice. Yes. Well, yes, they ended up. So yes, they were. Uh, they ended up being resolutions. At first, he was giving them advice, right? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, uh, Squirrel was you know talking to Mole, talking to Turtle, talking to Rabbit, and and they just. Came uh, came up to be uh, resolutions. So, what is your New Year's resolution? The, take out your first page, right there, right the one that's right in front of you. Yes, ma'am, that's the one. So, what is your goal for home? What what kind of um, goals do you have for home? Help, help, help. be helpful. Okay. To help your grandma because my. Grandma is in a wheelchair. Okay. Toys make food. Help make food because you don't cook yet, girlfriend. <laughs> so, Isabella, real quickly, tell me what are some things that you help your grandma uh, do? Um, help her set up the table and um, wash the spoons. And then, um, and then help her make food, and then... How do you help her make food? By grabbing the seasonings that she needs. The, okay, what else from the, from the fridge do you get? Um, the, the drinks. The drinks you have, so you set up the entire table. Yep, and then, you, and then when the laundry is done, we, we, I match the socks. So on goals for school, what are some goals for school that you have? Um, goals for school to learn, study very hard, to become a millionaire and in my book club. What are some goals for you, for yourself, and for this new year? Um, better relationship with God, join the a cheerleading squad. To graduate, to work hard, learn how to ride a bike without training wheels. Oh, learn what, oh that's awesome. I'll, I'll race you, okay? When you learn, I'll race you. Because then it wouldn't be fair. 2021 is a time to reflect and a time to plan, right? To plan ahead. Do you know what the word reflect means? To think back. To think back. Okay, so what did... To think back to when? Do you think... And Last year. Last year. That's awesome. That's good. Um, so what happened last year? There was a lot of things that were going that were happening because of COVID, right? Mm -hmm. So I know school was very, very challenging for you. Um, I know that you had expressed that you weren't able to concentrate a lot, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because everything was online and you needed some you needed some of your teachers' help and, and Thea wasn't able to help you. Um, I know Grandma, she struggles a little bit with, she's not computer savvy. She's She knows a little bit on the computer, but she struggled a lot to try and help you, but she did her very, very best, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what was the best thing that happened to you last year? I got all A's on my test, and I learned new science experiments. Think of at least one hope or wish that you have for the new year. I wish that, I wish my family to everyone to be safe to have a great new year and and to stay healthy what will you do to have a successful year to study to work hard to believe in in myself and to have faith in, in god because everything is in god's hands
Good morning, church family. It is good to be with you this morning as we celebrate in the liturgical year the baptism of our Lord Jesus. Uh, We are reminded in the liturgical, um, I am not a lectionary preacher usually, and I won't be teaching the scripture today, but we are reminded in the liturgical year that we remember um, Jesus is baptized by John the Baptist. And in that time, we hear the Lord say, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. And so in a liturgical year, this is the thought and the focus that we would be um, sharing with today. And it will make its way into the sermon. So I pray that as we approach this Sunday, uh, as we think about what our country has walked through and seen in this last week, in these last COVID season, in all that we have uh, rising up within us, that we would remember that our hearts and our spirit and our security rests in the Lord Jesus Christ, the one whom God has ordained to be our, uh, our beloved Savior and King. And so I invite you this morning as we settle into worship, I pray that your spirit finds peace. I pray that your spirit is at ease as we press into the presence of God. We have just a couple of announcements this morning. Um, First is that we are continuing in our series about listening to the language of the Bible, hearing uh, the scriptures as Jesus would have understood them, looking and listening at the Hebrew. Uh, We are doing a Wednesday night Zoom study And you can email me or the church office for that link and be included. We had quite an excellent conversation this last week as we discussed Shema and what it means to love God with all of who we are and looking at that Deuteronomy text. I invite you to participate. Um, and join us in that time together. Also, this week, Saturday, is the food pantry distribution, and so we will need volunteers. Uh, We would ask them to get here between 1015, 1030, with distribution at 11. Um, Again, that is our food pantry distribution. That'll be this Saturday. Uh, Volunteers needed at 1015, 1030 for a distribution at 11. I hope you will be able to share in that time with us. It has been a profound blessing for our church to be able to give back to our community and so I pray that you will want to be a part of that if you are able um, and share in that time together it's very uh, it's a very sweet time of the Lord to be able to bless the people in our community in the name of the Lord with the gifts and resources that this church has provided and poured out and so I thank you for that in advance Um, Let's see, what else do I have in here? I hope you were able to see uh, the slides that were coming through. If you um, just clicked in, then maybe you'll watch afterwards as we listed all of the food boxes that were given in memory or in honor. I am absolutely humbled about the amount that was um, given so that our community could be nourished, not just in food and in resources, but by God's heart and generosity during this Christmas and Advent season. And so I thank you for that. I thank you for the way you have blessed and remembered uh, those in your family and those in this community. And now one of the most important parts of our liturgy, most important parts of our time together is the passing of the peace. And it looks so very different now than it has in the past because we are not gathered together in person, but instead gathered by the Spirit of God. And so I invite you now in the comments and in the thread to bless one another in the name of Jesus Christ by offering the peace and grace of Jesus to one another.
the call to worship. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord thunders over mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. The voice of the Lord strikes with flashes of lightning. The voice of the Lord shakes the desert. The Lord shakes the desert of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord twists the oaks and strips the forest bare. And in his temple all cry, Glory! The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord is enthroned as king forever. The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. Good morning, church. Please join me in singing Great is Thy Faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever wilt be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. profession of faith. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is the one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. We believe in God the Father, infinite in wisdom, power, and love, whose mercy is over all his works, and whose will is ever directed to his children's good. 
We believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God and the Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the ground of our hope, and the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. We believe in the Holy Spirit as the divine presence in our lives, whereby we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ and find strength and help in time of need. We believe that this faith should manifest itself in the service of love, as set forth in the example of our blessed Lord to the end, that the kingdom of God may come upon the earth. Amen. Our scripture this morning comes from the book of Colossians, chapter 3, verses 23 through 24. Listen now for the word of the Lord. Whatever you do, do your work heartily as for the Lord, rather than for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance. It is the Lord Christ whom you serve. These are the words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I feel like I want to just read that verse, um, just that last part, one more time. It is the Lord Christ whom you serve. And I invite you just to let those words sink in to your mind, to your heart, into your spirit. Let them settle in. Let them seed and plant. Let them make you uncomfortable because it is the Lord that we serve. In light of everything that we have watched on the news and in social media, and, and not just this week, but in all of last year, and frankly, all of every day of every part of our lives, we struggle as a culture, as a context and a generation to remember that everything we do Every moment, every breath, from the time that we awake to the time that we lay our heads on the pillow, it's for the Lord. It belongs to the Lord. It is our act of worship. And I think particularly in our context today, what we are thinking about, what we're worrying about, we have to put it in the right context as disciples of Jesus as believers. And so our words today, the words, when you do all things, work heartily to the Lord, the work word, comes from the Hebrew word avad. Avad meaning to work, to labor, to serve, to worship. It has a multi- faceted context. And the variations of that word range from everything from laborer, worshiper, to slave. And we see that language echoed in Paul throughout the New Testament, I am a slave for Christ Jesus. But it's important for us to pull those words into our context. Do all of your work, all of your labor, as though for the Lord, not for men, not for the approval of men, not for the security of men from men, mankind, humanity, whatever context you need to hear it in to understand that it is not for the outside world or culture that we function, but for the kingdom of God. That we are workers, we serve, we labor, we worship. And it is in the context of who we are in the kingdom for Christ Jesus. And it ties into that piece, the core of what we are talking about from the Shema. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. All of what we are, all of what we do, every moment, all of our labor is about the glory of God and manifesting God's will and God's purpose on earth in the manner in which God approves, which is with love and compassion and justice. The other word we're pairing in here that ties also very closely is nefesh. When we look at the Shema and you read that portion that says, love the Lord your God with all your soul, 
The literal Hebrew word there is nefesh. And yes, nefesh means soul, but it also means your life. But not just your life, but your living existence. All of what you do is for the Lord. Not just your soul, but the embodiment of your day to day is for the Lord. Avad nefesh. Do your work of living for the Lord. All of what we are, all of what we have is a gift from God, and it must be stewarded as a gift from God. And it is only for God. In, in the book, um, in the devotional, as it filters out this word, this nefesh, um, it hits on something very interesting to me because, of course, it was written years ago. It wasn't written this week. And it talks about our inherent obstacle of being distracted by things in life, by our politics, by our jobs, by our families, by our circumstances, that somehow in the midst of living our every day, because we are not supremely focused and devoted in faithfulness to living the avad and nefesh, the shema, loving God with all that we are in all times, in all respects, in all ways, with all of our being, we fall into the trap of sinning in our anger, of trusting in governments and rulers and the authority of men over the authority of God. And it leads us astray. And not only do we get caught in this pain and this mess and this ability to fall mindlessly into sin in our anger, or our frustration, or our fear. We give something else, our service, our labor, and our worship, and it is not the Lord, and it becomes an idol to us. I think it is fair to say that we understand that politics has become a measure of idolatry in this country. We have labeled people very generically as left, right, Republican, Democrat, the steadfast, libertarian, independent, like we've identified ourselves in ways that have nothing to do with who we are. Or at the very least, a very unimportant piece of who we are. You see, our identity first must be as sons and daughters of God. And as sons and daughters of God who live their whole lives, their nefesh, in the service and worship of God, the avad, then only the heart of God in our words and our actions matter. It's a difficult line we walk here because the heart of God is also to do justice. We're told that very plainly in Micah. This is what the Lord requires of you, to love mercy, to do justice, to walk humbly with our God. It's about our God. It is about what God's heart for God's people are. And, and there are those who would make the distinction that, well, they aren't believers, they aren't God's people, or here's how we separate who we're actually working for or who we're called to love, who we're called to be merciful and compassionate to. And the fact is, whether a person claims God or not, God claims them. They are the creation of the king of the universe, and he declares all people his beloved children. And whether they respond in kind or not does not change who they are in the eyes of God. Which means for us, though it will be complicated and difficult and frustrating, it means no matter how we personally feel about another person's thoughts, politics, actions, they belong to us in a kingdom sense, and we have to love them. We won't always like them. Truth of the matter is, we'll probably very rarely agree with them. 
But the avad and the nefesh, the labor of our lives submitted in faithfulness to God, says we get over ourselves and love God. And we love God by loving each other. As I talked with different colleagues and clergy and how we were going to approach today, because we can't in any kind of good conscience come into church on Sunday after what our country experienced and pretend it didn't happen, not acknowledge it. And there were many who wanted to share their political feelings on the matter, who wanted to declare a right and a wrong. And I am not one of them. Because as your pastor, my politics don't matter. My theology does. My heart for the Lord and how I communicate God's heart for you in our response is what matters. That is the call to action. And to say that we are to love each other in spite of our anger and our wounds and our disagreement is not popular. And it feels like a trite well-used, easily thrown out phrase until we mean that we are going to love each other because loving people is hard. Because we've already decided in our minds that some people aren't worthy of our love or our forgiveness. And if it were about being worthy, none of us could stand. But we are called into this language that Scripture woos us with. The Shema, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. To love your neighbor as yourself. That the avad and the nefesh, the work of our daily lives, of all of who we are, is about bringing the love of God into the kingdom here on earth. That it is transformed so that what we saw and what we witnessed and what made us crazy with heartache and anger this week doesn't happen again. I've, I've read and I've heard and I've watched people talking about what's fair, what's right, what did happen, what didn't happen, what could have happened. But the fact of the matter is we have to keep moving forward. If we get trapped in our anger about what did or didn't happen, we can't bring the future of God's kingdom to be. We get trapped in the anger of our sin. And that is not worship of God. That is worship of self. God calls us to love each other. And the scriptures tell us that we are to love each other. First uh, John says... Anyone who says that they love God but hates their brother is a liar. Those are harsh words, but they're true words. But loving is hard because we're broken and we're flawed and we are so sure in the depth of our spirit that we are wrong and somebody, or that we are right and somebody else is wrong, that we can't see that God has a larger vision. And that larger vision calls us to a larger responsibility and a larger repentance. Like it or not, we belong to each other. It means we find a way to forgive the unforgivable. We find a way to choose God's heart over our personal feelings. Because we are called to worship God, to labor in God's heart on behalf of God, to bring wholeness and reconciliation and the shalom, the peace of God that comes from the healing of our circumstances. We don't pretend it didn't happen. We don't get caught up in right and wrong because scriptures are clear that it is better to do good than to be right. And so we choose to love, a love that is sacrificial, Instead of worshiping ourselves at the altar, we put ourselves on the altar of sacrifice. In the teaching of that word nefesh, it references that amongst the Jewish culture, they talk about nefesh being 
not just like a sacrifice of your of your comfort or your your conveniences or your preferences, but literally a sacrifice of your life. And it talks about a rabbi being martyred in the oppression under Rome who is yelling the Shema in his torture, that he is worshiping God by offering his very breath, his last breath. How terribly uncomfortable for those of us who struggle with convenience. What fits into our mindset or what is easy to do as a believer. How we give either of our time or our resources or our preferences. But then to say we would give our very lives for the worship of God to declare that God is first in our heart, in our mind, in our spirit, and that all that we are points to the good that God is and will do in this world by bringing the kingdom of heaven to earth, by redeeming all that is broken and messed up. The nefesh, the soul, the very life. Our worship is our very life. In context, we have talked about in the course of all of our lives that God only asks for 10%. When we talk about a tithe, I have heard people very flippantly sort of say, God says you can have all 90% and you just give 10. And that's not really true because God demands all of who we are and all of what we have because God gave it to us. And the same is true of our lives and our days. We talk about God has set aside the Sabbath for rest, and so we get to go about our work six days a week and then just deal with God one day a week. And that is not true, because that word, that word avad, our work, that's every day. That's from the moment we wake to the moment we lay down, our jobs, our school, our relationships, all of it, all of it. Is about how we keep God first in our thoughts and our actions and our words, and we bring God's presence into all of those places. And then on the seventh day, our, sh- our place of Shabbat, our place of rest, it isn't that we then neglect God on the day of rest, but that we rest in God's holy presence. We cease from doing the work of love to focus on receiving God's love. And I have utterly misspoken because we never stop doing the work of love. But there is a time where we rest in it. Where we say, in this moment, I will receive God's peace. I will receive what God has to give. I will be nourished and I will give back. I will love God with my presence. And then I get back into doing the work of love the very next day. I get back into doing the work of the kingdom. These are straight biblical scriptural mandates, and they will continue to be the most controversial words most pastors will ever speak. To challenge people to let go of their preferences and their worship of culture and politics and identity outside of Christ, outside of the Lord, outside of the King of Kings, God, creator of the universe. That all of those things that we worship, all of those things that we deny that we worship, I remember very clearly the first time I heard a pastor preach it in a way that ripped me to the core. He had us all sit down with the worship bulletin in service and write down just some notes. What do you spend the most time doing each week? Where, when you do your budget and you reconcile your budget, where is most of your money spent? When you look at the things that you do for pleasure and for joy, what are those things? What are the things that bring you the most joy? What do you work the hardest at? What do you desire most in your life? 
And as we are all furiously writing our very ambitious, self-focused lists about family and rent and being the perfect size six, he then says, that which you desire most is that which you worship. I'll be honest, in that moment, neither the Lord Jesus or my faith were anywhere on those lists. And it called me out of complacency. It stung, and it didn't happen immediately, because I was immediately defensive. I can't tithe more than my rent. I have to pay my rent. I have to have a place to live. I immediately started nitpicking the details to let go of the call to correction. It's a hard word, but my friends, it isn't about choosing to love other people. It isn't about overlooking other people's faults. It isn't about being okay with people sinning or, or the injustice of what we see in our world because the Lord calls us to justice. What it is is about choosing to love God more than anything else. And if I choose to love God more than anything else, then I learn to love the people that make me most crazy. It's a privilege to love the people that love you back, right? But if I'm going to love all of God's people, then I have to decide that I love God enough to let go of my own wounds, my own fear, my own frustration, to love who I have decided are the least and the lost. I pray today that you are wrestling with a hard word from the Lord. To choose to love God and to choose God's heart for God's people over your own desires. Over your own plan, over your own politics. And begin doing the work of love that brings the peace of God, that declares that God is first in our heart, in our mind, in our lives, and we see the world transformed. Would you pray with me? Lord God, we don't have enough words. We don't have good words. We just have what's in our heart. And I know that you are good with the truth of where we're at. And so if we are angry, God, I pray that we would give you that anger. That we would share that with you. That we would be honest about it. If we are frustrated, if we are tired, if we don't know how to get past our own preferences and politics and limitations, our anger, our dislike, that we would just be honest with you about it and let you deal with us. God, we want you to be first before our own thoughts, before our own needs. God, we want to give you all of who we are. pray that we would be satisfied with nothing less but complete surrender to your spirit, God. And it's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. With my whole heart, Lord, let me love you with my whole No.
Lord, let me love you with my whole mind. None above you praise and love you with my whole mind. With my whole mind. Lord, let me hear you with my whole mind. Ever near you. Help me hear you with my whole mind. With my whole life, Lord, let me love you with my whole life. None above you, praise and love you with my As we come into a time of prayer, I invite you just in the honesty and the stillness of your own heart and your own spirit to confess before God those places where we have broken God's heart this week, where we have spoken and responded in anger and in violence, where we have created enmity, where we have cast aspersion and accusation where we have sinned with the violence of our own words, if not the violence of our own deeds. God, it's in your goodness and your faithfulness that though we sin and we stumble, you never fail and you never leave us behind. You never throw your hands up in the air and say, I'm done with you. Instead, you open your arms and you invite us to come close. You call us your beloved and you wrap us up tightly and you claim us as your own. You pull us close and you settle us upon your chest and you quiet us with the rhythm of your heart beating beneath our ear like a parent who comforts a child and when there aren't words enough to say you sing over us and you lead us into a place of quiet and humility and worship and you invite us to speak our heart and to ask and then you wait for us to listen Lord God we we come and we lift those in our community who need your healing your intervention your provision For Tom and Trish, Norma and Luis, for Bob, for Marilyn, for Maya, for Yoko, for Gina, for Marilyn, for Jean, Jason, Annalise, Renita, Sandy, Don, Donna, Edna, 
Mary, Shan, for Dwayne and Pam and Juan, for Carmen and Juan, for Kim, for Chris. Lord God, we pray for our country. We pray that hearts would be turned to you, that we would be a people on our knees, that we would repent and believe, that we would hold each other in the power of your love and your grace, that we would trust in your provision and your protection, that we would trust in your sovereignty. And if we are afraid or if we are uncertain that we would press more deeply into your scriptures, into your presence, into prayer, that we would lean not on our own understanding, but on the very word of God. God, that we would come in humility, that we would abandon our anger, that we would abandon our need to be right, and instead be made holy. God, that we would move forward in grace. We would move forward in compassion. I invite you now as a community to enter your own prayer requests, that you would not be anonymous behind a screen, but instead you would know that you are gathered by God's Spirit and we worship together. That you would lift your prayer requests that we might be the people of God and pray with and for you. Lord God, we ask for your fullness. We trust in your goodness, in your authority, in your power. God, we trust that you are already working on our behalf. You know what we need before we do. God, would you move in us that we might confess and surrender? God, would you call us into a place where we see how we can be your hands and feet, how we bring forgiveness, how we bring healing in your name? And we do it in a way that is honest and it's real, that it isn't pretend, there is no bitterness, it will not harbor any more disease of this spirit, but instead will be a true transformation of who we are into your image, empowered by your spirit. That it isn't something we put on, but it is someone we become in the power of the Holy Spirit. Pray that even now, hearts are turned to you, that we feel the outpouring of your Holy Spirit anointing from the top of our head to the bottom of our feet, 
the warm oil of gladness, of joy, of repentance. God, we cling to your word that you give beauty for ashes and a garment of praise for our heaviness. God, we lean into your word that you restore the stolen years, the locust years. And the promise that if your people will humble themselves and pray, that you will heal their land. We declare our love for you first, God. Your heart, your will, your desires, your plan, your purpose, your kingdom, your delight. Do something new in us, O oh God. Living water in the desert. Let us be your people, O oh God. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. This is the time in our service where we invite you to return a portion of what God has given you back to God in our tithes and our offerings. And there are ways, countless ways to give. You can give via Facebook, through our webpage. You can mail in your check. You can drop it off at the Dropbox. Um, you can set up your own direct deposit. There are lots of ways to continue to give to the church, and it is necessary and vital for us to continue to give our tithes and our offerings so that we continue to do the work of the church until we can gather in person again. But beyond that, we are called into a place where we listen for God's voice and we give a gift of ourselves. What is it that the Lord requires of us today? What would bless God's heart in our own gift of ourself, of our humility, of our forgiveness, of our repentance? And make that offering maybe first and foremost to reconcile, to forgive, to repent. But give of yourself to the Lord.
Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. When darkness veils his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then righteousness alone, thoughts less to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. Thank you for worshiping with us this morning. Thank you for being in God's presence and sharing in this time in which we seek God's heart together. I pray that you know the fullness of God's blessing and abundance in your life. And in this coming week, you know the indisputable assurance of his presence with you. Receive this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord turn his face to you and give you favor. The Lord lift his face to you and give you his shalom his peace. Amen. Mm -hmm.